But well, today we're talking with people who are sharing the impact of their remarkable honesty and how it's had an effect on their lives. Starting with someone I adore, our very first guest today, Mel B. Yeah. Gosh, we know Mel B as a pop superstar who rose to worldwide global fame, part of the legendary group. You might know him, the Spice Girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I, what I love about Mel has always been her ability to reinvent herself. She then went out on her own solo album in 2000, went on to become a TV talent show judge and a Broadway star. But, but it was Mel B's deeply personal, best-selling memoir, Brutally Honest, where she shared how she was left feeling, in her words, girl powerless, after losing almost everything, including her life. In her book, Mel B described herself as, quote, the woman with everything and nothing, who had tried to kill herself. She said, I felt ashamed, humiliated, petrified, guilty, and isolated. Now, in the expanded paperback edition of that memoir, Mel B is revealing even more. She's added three new chapters. I love the title. It's called Rising from the Ashes, which she tells the unfiltered story of how she really pieced herself back together after her 2017 divorce left her broken. She's always opening up about, you know, of course, becoming a champion for survivors of abuse. She's talking about learning to trust again. She is now in love and engaged. Yeah! I'm so happy for her. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome multi-platinum recording superstar mama three and survivor the Mel B. <laughs> I mean, so we have not seen each other since 2017. Oh my gosh. Okay, so God, Mel B, that's like she seven years ago. Seven years ago. You co hosted with me on the Today Show. Then we hung out on Broadway at Chicago where you were starring. <laughs> yeah. That was us. <laughs> I know, and, and I'm just, God, I'm so proud of you for so many reasons. Um, I know you behind the scenes. And you always, people always ask, what is someone like behind the scenes? You are so sweet, so supportive, Aww, so loving. Oh, you. Aww. Uh, you really are. <laughs> so, when I first read your memoir, when it came out, Brutally Honest, of course, like everyone, my heart just poured out for you mm -hmm. because you are such a good person. These new chapters, though, and adding new perspective to this memoir, people don't often yeah. do that. Yeah, well, you know what? The first edition of the book got brought out in 2017. Yeah. And now we're in 2024, and a lot's happened to my life since then. You know, I've gotten out of that abusive marriage that lasted 10 years. I moved in with my mum during the pandemic, because mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> I found out that I was not only abused on different levels, but also yeah. financially abused. Yeah. So I had to eat humble pie and figure out my finances, put my head down and work. And you know what? I'm a survivor, yeah. and I campaign yeah. for other survivors. Um, yeah. And first of all, I just want to say, I'm really proud of you. You're in your fourth season, girl. Oh, my God. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, my love. I appreciate yes. it. I, You're brilliant. I, oh, thank you. I, and I appreciate it because I, I know, first of all, writing a memoir, that's why I've never written one and I don't know if I could because you are pouring and laying your soul oh, yeah. bare. You are. Um, you even decided not to do the audio version. I couldn't. It was too painful too for painful me. Too painful for you to yeah, experience again. Honestly. But you wanted to come back. Yeah. And set the record straight on so many things. Yeah, because I think, I think people think, so once you've left an abusive relationship, oh, you're fine now. Yeah. Well, no, you're not, because you have to piece yourself back together. Mm. You're riddled with shame and guilt yeah. and all this horrible stuff, and you have to start trusting and believing in yourself again. Yeah. And that takes time, because that takes time. An, abuser, an abuser will destroy your everything, mm. your self-worth, your confidence, and abuse can happen to anyone. And it, it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. They are very good at what they do. They do it slowly, slowly, slowly. You write and so about... they segregate you from all your family, yeah. all your friends, and you're left just traumatized. 
You have a term for it in the book that you write. It's coercive. Coercive control. That's actually a law in the US and in Australia. I think you're about to get it here, hopefully, too. Coercive control. Mm -hmm. And that is, as you talk about, the subtle things. It's uh, you should wear this and yeah. not that. It's yeah. those little things. And you were experiencing that in the marriage. Yeah, that and a whole yeah. pressler of other things. And, you know, people say to me, so why didn't you just leave? Why didn't you just get out? Well, it's really impossible because they trap you. Yeah. They can blackmail you, especially if you've got kids involved. You know, you don't, mm -hmm. you don't want your kids taken away from you. Yeah. So I, I explain it like this. Abusers, that is their job. And I'm good at my job, you're good at your job. Abusers, they, they have to be good at their job because you're their income, you're their lifestyle, you're their everything. Yeah. You talk about um, the past marriage with your ex in the book, yeah. who was also your manager. Which, uh, for God 10 knows years. how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> you're the best. You wrote, um, with emotional abuse, you often don't even realize you're being abused. It's a sneaky no. cycle, and by the time you do realize, you have lost your confidence yeah. to such a degree that all you feel is that you are a mess. Um, yeah. I should point out, he denies these allegations, but of a lot of things does. are well documented here. Well, you know, he's already been criminally charged for domestic violence from a prior relationship yeah. before me <laughs> that I just found out about, you know? So abusers won't stop unless they are stopped. That's why in the back of my book, I've done the 15 signs yeah. of abuse because a lot of people have read my book and then they go to the back of it and they go, oh my God, I can tick one, two, three of those. Mm -hmm. So we need to know the warning signs because if I would have known those 15 signs of abuse, maybe the lights would have gone on a, a little bit sooner and I would have gotten out of there because today, three women die per week, either from their former partner or their current partner. And that is a statistic that is getting higher and higher. Mm -hmm. And it predominantly happens to women. Mm -hmm. And us women, we're a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, we've got to stop this. We've got to educate ourselves, educate our children, educate the justice system and the police, and try and stop it, because it's happening to the females more and more and more. Um, and I, I mean, I know we, we've talked a lot, but I don't know if you know, I, I, our audience is aware my sister's death was an unsolved murder and she experienced years of domestic violence and i witnessed and and oh i've done God. work with safe horizon I'm and so day sorry. one and so to your point those statistics touch us all i mean we are both sitting here from different perspectives of mm -hmm. it but two women who now have the opportunity to use our voices and, and our platform to speak yeah. up for other people and it's interesting because you talk about, in the book, the financial abuse. Yeah. And in it, you write, um, in the winter of 2019, I was no longer living a fantasy. Despite having done a 13-date tour, I had no money left to buy a house in my hometown where I was living with Phoenix, your child, and Angel. Mm -hmm. In my mother's four-bedroom bungalow, looking It wasn't four-bedroom, it was two-bedroom bungalow. <laughs> it was very small. And it was during the pandemic. Yeah. So you all... <laughs> but there you were, you'd made estimate around 85 million dollars over your career you did you know america's got talent and you were moving back into your mother's home yeah yeah and you said and humble pie i think you humble described. pie humble because pie. you know what i've said this before abuse can happen to anyone mm -hmm. you you don't look look to find an abusive relationship but an abuser will hunt you down they'll get you when you're feeling most vulnerable and don't forget you are their lifestyle, so they have to abuse and be good at it. Mm. It's their job, it's their only job. Usually abusers don't have any other job what apart from that. What was it like to that. share with, the, the, with your children? I mean, you have three children. Well, Phoenix, Phoenix is now in her 20s, right? 25. 25. Phoenix actually wrote her own chapter in the book, yeah, and yeah. she also campaigns in schools and educates kids on what a healthy relationship should look like. Yeah.